great honor and pleasure to introduce um, Professor Clifford Hudis, the president of the American Society, uh, CEO of American uh, Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO, uh, past, who is also the past president of ASCO, and he has been leading the organization for many years, and under his leadership, the uh, ASCO uh, developed very fast and is still developing. ASCO has, has a special place in my heart because it made a huge uh, uh, changes in my personal and professional life. Thank you very much, Dr. Houdis, for being with us and for finding a time. Uh, let me first give the floor to Dr. Houdis. He is going to share uh, the incredible work ASCO is doing uh, on the field of pediatric cancer and drug development. And then we'll talk about the great work Pancare is doing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. I trust you can hear me. Um, yeah. So um, I am going to uh, share just a brief overview of ASCO's efforts in drug development globally, but I have to start by pointing out two obvious things. The first is that uh, while childhood cancer is a component of what ASCO is focused on, uh, of course, it was found at ASCO uh, by uh, adult oncologists. And indeed, much of what I talk about will have to be focused on that. The second is uh, ASCO was founded in the United States in 1964. And as a consequence, um, uh, it had a very US focused uh, perspective for many years, although in recent years, as you will hear, uh, that has been expanded. And I will point out that uh, our board of directors requires the presence of a pediatric oncologist at all times. So um, one more little bit of background, just to make one thing uh, very clear, there is a much more complicated governance structure or corporate structure to ASCO than most of the professional audience may realize. Everybody is used to belonging to ASCO and thinking of that as the organization. But for this discussion, I want to highlight one key point, which is that there is a separate ASCO Foundation, and its name is Conquer Cancer. And its role in um, uh, our global efforts is critically important, linked but distinct. And I want to just make sure that the audience appreciates that subtle but important difference. ASCO has become increasingly interested in and dedicated to the challenge of global uh, oncology simply because the world has changed largely for the better uh, over the uh, 50 plus years since ASCO was founded in 1964. Despite the continuous onslaught of depressing and challenging bad news, there are some basic truths that the last two centuries have revealed on a global scale and they're worth highlighting. Uh, world literacy has risen, world income has risen, uh, the number of people living in abject poverty has fallen and so on. And the reason that that economic information is so important to us as oncologists is that the most common solid tumors, especially of adulthood, rise steeply when income, specifically gross domestic product, rises in a country. And that, in a nutshell, is the challenge that ASCO is trying to rise to meet along with many others around the world. Because while countries move into nominal middle class, the incidence of breast, colon, prostate, and lung cancer in particular rise in lockstep. And that means that there'll be huge and growing demands for care, cutting edge care, Western style high quality care uh, around the world will be the expectation. And our opportunity is to meet that need. And that's the reason that uh, for the last more than 10 years, ASCO has increased its dedication and focus to uh, global oncology. In that regard, I would point out that fully one third of the membership of ASCO is now uh, from outside the United States. And as an aside, uh, ref referencing the discussion just heard on low and low middle income countries, all uh, oncologists who wish to belong to ASCO from low or low middle income countries can do so with no charge and they receive full member benefits. And we see this as a nod to the future, because of course, uh, we are optimists and expect those countries to rise uh, in terms of income in the years ahead. 
and some of those members who are now free will, of course, presumably be eligible to pay dues in the future. Now, uh, stepping a little more into the weeds, uh, ASCO's key efforts are focused on three mission pillars, research, education, and promotion of the highest quality and equitable care. And we do that fundamentally to drive the improvement, the continuous improvement in global oncology care. Uh, among our, uh, our three mission pillars of research, education, and quality, we have seven programmatic areas that we focus on. Grant making, clinical research, meetings, publications, professional development for the field, advocacy, and practice support. And it's not hard, I'm sure, for you to imagine the specific projects within each of those seven areas that truly constitute ASCO's work and our effort. But what I wanna highlight in the next few minutes is two specific areas. One is our global efforts in general, and the second is the specific research that we do, not because it's narrowly relevant to pediatric oncology, but because it represents a model for how to do lower cost uh, drug development. And it certainly could be applied, especially in the context of relatively rare diseases like uh, childhood cancers. So um, just backing up for a moment, the genomic revolution, at least in the West and certainly in the United States, has led to the widespread use of genomic testing as part of routine care uh, for patients with advanced solid and liquid tumors. Uh, and this includes children down to age 12 in, in this case. And uh, the result of that, of course, is that doctors will identify mutations and uh, genomic alterations that are associated with response to targeted therapies. However, those drugs are most of the time FDA approved in a limited way based on histology. And in this case, genomic alterations for a different histology would motivate a doctor to try to give those drugs. And they face challenges again because they're off label and there are versions of this challenge throughout the world, of course. So the ASCO Targeted Agent and Profiling Utilization Registry or TAPER is essentially a tumor agnostic clinical trial currently enrolling patients with more than 40 different tumor types and more than 85 different targets onto 18 treatments. To be eligible, the treatment has to be available in the U.S. Uh, with FDA approval, but this use in this trial is so-called off-label. There have been 546 specific cohorts created now since the trial opened. Each cohort is one tumor type with a specific mutation and a targeted therapy. There are 188 open today. 34 have been completed. Many of the others failed to complete because they were so rare. There have been 14 negative, but 20 positive. And following the rules of the trial, 39 of these initial cohorts, which can start at a size of 12, have been expanded, and that's because of positive signal. This has generated 16 manuscripts, 32 posters, and two oral presentations at various scientific meetings. All of this is available online if you want to look. I'm highlighting this today because this is a model of easy eligibility, distributed uh, enrollment at hundreds of sites, and low uh, impact data collection that's inexpensive. Um, these trials cost a fraction of what traditional drug development trials cost, and they provide acutely relevant information for oncologists in the US and around the world. So TAPER, we think, is a model that might be considered. The second trial I just want to highlight is a real-world study. It's the other end of the spectrum focused on older women who receive CDK4-6 inhibitors in uh, the treatment of metastatic breast cancer. The simple story is that the package insert dose for that trial or for that drug that leads to a high rate of toxicity and discontinuation. Our study for women over 65 randomizes them to receive the standard package insert dose of either palbociclib or ribocyclib in combination with standard endocrine therapy for first-line treatment in the metastatic setting. And then um, the uh, randomization is between that standard dose or an, a low dose. And the endpoint is simple. How long did they stay on the trial? So again, it's a very inexpensive, low-cost way to enroll a large number of patients onto a pragmatic study. So uh, I want to just switch to the last moments here and uh, emphasize the way in which we're trying to help 
uh, our colleagues around the world engage in this kind of work for themselves or the future. And that's through the establishment of what we call ASCO's regional councils. And we have currently four of these running. The first was in Asia Pacific in 2019, the second in Latin America in 2021, Sub-Saharan Africa in 2022, and we just embarked on the Central and Eastern yeah. European uh, Regional Council in 2023. The goal is to um, uh, solicit local leaders in uh, a number of countries in each of those regions to increase our engagement uh, through a re regional approach, increase the international member involvement, and help us understand the key priorities of each one of the regions. So for example, ASCO Pacific has launched a regional education meeting called ASCO Breakthrough. We run our International Cancer Corps program in Malaysia with their guidance, and they've developed a leadership program um, similar to, to the one that you participated in uh, for Asia Pacific. We also have a program called Every Grant where uh, sponsors can uh, enable us to run a local grant competition uh, and identify worthy research studies in those regions. And this too might be an opportunity in the context of today's Ankathon. Uh, we have similar uh, programs, a little not uh, a little less developed in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and as I said, Central and Eastern Europe. So uh, that was a quick tour through ASCO's um, international efforts as well as our uh, drug development efforts. I should close by pointing out one key thing. For a professional society, the last thing we want to do is compete with the research efforts of our members. So one of the rules for ASCO is we only do a clinical trial when there is no other resource or program able or willing to do it, and it has immediate pragmatic clinical impact. So uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to present our, our work and to participate in this exciting uh, program today. Thank you so much, Professor Houdis. Thank you very much again. And I'm saying this on behalf of many people, many members of the ASCO and other stakeholders who are benefiting from the ASCO's work and your work, what you are doing. You mentioned also Conquer Cancer Foundation. It it made some uh, for many people, hundreds, thousands of people. It was really a life changer, including for myself and many others. And uh, thank you again for being today uh, for having time uh, for this talk and for supporting us with your presence and for your great uh, presentation about the problem. Thank you very much.